The eastern part of Nigeria, uh, where we have um, the Igbos. I'll be cooking an Igbo food, um, well known in Igbo land. If you have been to a traditional Igbo um, marriage, if you have been to most of the Igbo um, ceremony, festival, you must found the soup. It is actually a soup. You must always found it. You see men of different, different um, statues rejoicing and, you know, eating it and enjoying it. This is bitter leaf, which is actually called Onubo soup in Igbo land, in Igbo language. So I hope I'll take you all the way to um, the cooking process. Actually, welcome to my kitchen. Um, this moment, this is where I'm going to be doing the cooking. It is actually a tiny space. If you have been to Nigeria, when you are living, um, you know, when you're not living in a very big two place or a house made by yourself, you are actually have to um, manage your space as far as your kitchen is concerned. So this my kitchen is not actually big, but this is where I do all my cooking, and this is where I call my home kitchen. <laughs> yeah, this is my one one of my kitchen, um, one of my um, apartments in nigeria we are actually uh, visit and now i'll be doing this vlog here i just hope you follow me all the way and i just hope i will be if you don't know how to cook bitter leaf soup you've never cooked bitter leaf soup you are going to enjoy this bitter leaf soup because it is mwah. and believe me i'll take you all the way if you watch this video you can actually learn how to do put one or two things and your bitter leaf soup is actually good bitter leaf soup is not actually made to be bitter it has to have some elements of bitterness. Thank you. While we are waiting for um, the cochlea to um, boil, we have the cochlea in the other place. Zoom line. We have the cochlea uh, and cochlea here. While we are waiting for the cochlea, I have washed the meat. I have the snail, the beef meat, the chicken. I'm actually using much of the chicken throat. And in cooking bitter leaf, I think I should advise you not to use um, chicken breast because um, it's, it has a one, it's very soft and it can actually a kind of um, actually a kind of it can actually scatter inside the, inside the soup. So this is this is the meat. I'm going to use this. This is a wooden toner. Turn it, please. Now, I'm not supposed to add water, but whenever I'm, I'm boiling my own chicken, I allow my chicken to foam out the water mm -hmm. I use in cooking. But right now, I added it because I have my snail and I have uh, my beef. And snail does not have its own water, it's like get. So this is it, and I'm going to allow it to um, cook. I'm going to allow it to cook. So, while I'm allowing it to cook, I'm going to wash this top fish and it is called okboroko in name in Igbo language i'm going to wash it very well and i'm washing it very well you make sure you wash it with hot water because you can see this please you can see this um that is coming out of it sometimes they leave inside it so i have to wash it it's, it's not when you see them scared sometimes it's like this so i'm going to wash it then after washing it is the way to wash the dry fish i'm going to pick the bone out and wash it you can put so um you can see my meat everything is um cooking well so now i'm going to add salt you remember the first time i did not add salt so this is the moment i did it purposely now i'm going to add salt so that why, why i cooked it before like that so that the chicken we have the um the, the maggi um spy um test as in we, the, the, the taste of the maggi will enter very well into it. So right now, I have my salt. Be careful with salt while cooking. You don't need um, a lot of salt. You don't need lots of salt. Yeah, so um, I'm going to turn it. 
mind you that when it is boiling that does not mean that your meats are done it simply means it's boiling so i have to cover it back and um wait in the pot very soft how do you know that it's done all you need is to do like this you feel it easy to peel wow this is hot don't try it at home yeah so the cocoa yam is done so i'm going to um remove it sieve the water out and um start to peel fish you have this washed and ready to use You know what we use this for? We call it Ikwe and Akwodo in Igbo language. This is Ikwe and this is Akwodo. But I always forgot, okay? This is this is the two. So I'm going to use it to pound the cocoa Yes. You can actually, actually it's, it's very easy. I can actually use, we have equipment you can actually use to blend it. But I told you I'm cooking this in a traditional way. So I'm going to pound it in a traditional way. So very easy. I'm removing it. Now you should be mindful of the how much cooking you use while cooking your bitter leaf. You you gauge the quantity so that your if it is not okay, if it is not enough, your your bitter leaf ends up being um, watery. Then if it is enough, you have a very good thick soup. I love my soup thick, I don't know about you. I don't know how to eat a watery food. But in case you like your soup watery, then you can use just a little of it. So this is me peeling the um, bitter leaf off. Sometimes most of them didn't um, they don't use to. Yeah. They say Ibo people say um, better soup na money killer. Bitter leaf soup is not meant to be bitter. You know, there was a time I visited a place, I don't want to call name, and when I ate the bitter leaves there, Jesus. Only me leave the food run, even the meat inside. So it is not meant to be very bitter. You are supposed to watch the bitterness and leave a slight of it. A slight of it. This, this is not medicine. You are not eating medicine. It is a soup. So this is it. This is what we have. You can snap it. This is what we have. This is what we have. So this is your bitter. This is your, sorry. This is your cocoa yam after you've peeled it off. Now I'm going to put it here. And I'm a kind of, I'm going to, I'm doing it on the floor. Because I don't have another place to do it. So I'm going to put it here. And um, it kind of. You see? You see me doing it? And put it like. Now, this is the paste you've gotten. This hot water is actually meant to use in washing um, the dried fish. I'm meant to wash it. And also, I'll use some of it to wash this to make sure that no, and in fact, it is advisable to wash this and this with hot water, the stock fish and the dried one. So, uh, this is after washing it with hot water, it becomes the sauce, all the um, orishi rishi, all the um. Things, tomatoes, and everything that sometimes leads into it because it's been it's been um, stored. Yeah, it's gone. So I'm going to um, turn my food. After turning it, I'll make sure I turn it so that the stock fish looks so that the stock fish goes beneath. Yeah, because the meat has been boiling for some time. You can see the vapor from the hot water. 
This is the stockfish. So this is the last, the last stage of washing it. So right now I'm going to sieve it. I'm sieving the stockfish. So at this stage, at this very stage, I'm going to add the oil for that after like 10 seconds of boiling it again so this is the oil red oil african red oil palm oil so that's the next thing i will um, add to it that's the next thing now the water the water i'm using is quite not enough quite not enough. So what I will do, I will add more water. Yes. This is the paste. I'm setting it on the plate. Why? Because I'll be using um this mortar I'll be using it to um, to grind the um, the crayfish, the crayfish and pepper. If you're using fresh pepper, I'm not using fresh pepper here. I'm using I have already ground pepper, so no need to um, actually wash it again. You don't need to wash this wash this again. All you need to do. Let me try and get extra. Try and get extra of your so that you don't leave anyone on the water. So this is a uh, my oil in the with my meats that are boiling. Yeah. Halloween dish. You cannot. Every African soup has this. You cannot cook an African soup without your crayfish. The spice and give um, this the soup a wonderful taste. Apart from being uh, a seafood and being uh, proteinous to your body, it gives a great taste to your soup. Same what I use. So um, I'm grinding it. You don't mind you can see so that's every paste and everything you know my grandma used to tell me that when you see where they are cooking and they put it this stick using grounding they put it um in the um oh my god i'm almost sweating it's not easy here it's very hot and the kitchen is very very small i don't know what's happening to my stick yes. to my spoon so i'm trying to get all the fish to cook lamb from the water. Um. My soup. The next thing I'm going to add the cocoa yam paste. Can you see? Oh my god, I'm sweating. I'm going to add the cocoa yam paste. So you don't just put all of them once, you cut it so that it can be easy to melt down and take in your soup. In fact, let me cut it more. Now, the reason I dip it with my water, my hand inside the, uh, the soup is so that I can cut it effectively. So is it will be it will thicken the soap it will do what thicken the soap now there's something actually i have not um added here which is the pepper i have my pepper ground here so i'm going to add the pepper i actually enjoy using fresh pepper but now i think i should stick to what i have 
So this is ground pepper. I'm going to measure one full of this. And then I'll measure a little bit. Okay. Careful with your pepper when I'm turning the whole soup together. Now, I'll be to leave soup. I'll allow it to cook for um, 10 minutes. Okay, let me give you some. I'm going to allow it to cook for the next seven minutes. Because um, this is gas and it is very, very hard. I'm going to show you the bitter leaf. Now, why cooking bitter leaf too? We have two types of bitter leaf. There yeah, is this bitter leaf you go to the market, especially the south south. They have this time. When you go to the Igbo region, I don't think you see that kind of bitter leaf. It is very tiny, like sand. I actually love using that bitter leaf to cook um, a goosey soup. To cook a goosey soup is very good with a goosey soup. But you cannot use that kind of bitter leaf while cooking my beautiful. Um, bitter leaf soup. Okay. The kind of bitter leaf soup you you need is something chewable. Yeah. So right now, if you can see this, that this bitter leaf is not that tiny, and it's not that long. You don't just make it. This is. You can see. This, okay. Look at look at this bitter leaf. You see the the, the leaf, You see the stick. The bitter leaf leaf stick. You can see. You see how it looks like. Now this is it. Now I'm not. Some people actually wash and cook their bitter leaf. After washing it, I love that's why I make I, I make sure I take time to wash it and the bit leave a little bitterness in it. So this is my washed or bitter leaf. I'm not going to cook it. I'm not going to cook it. It is already. I have lost a lot of nutrient and a lot of bitterness. I can actually be to it. Now, why how do you know your bitter leaf is okay? For um for to cook, after washing it and you chew it, you speak it. I can chew it. You chew it, and you can endure that bitterness in it. Then yes, you can use it to cook. But if you cannot endure the bitterness, you have this your mmm. You make this kind of face while eating it. Please, you cannot enjoy it. You cannot endure that kind of bitterness. So I enjoy it. Mmm. The bitterness is actually sweet. So, compost. Okay. Okay, now, some people will say, um, you don't have to put your cocoa yam before putting, uh, before adding your bitter leaf. That is the truth. That is the truth, please. That is the truth. But there are different ways of cooking. I can actually decide to put. I remember when I'm always cooking for my mom. She has actually she's actually asking me, did you put the bitter leaf before the cocoa yam? Don't you know you have to put the cocoa bitter leaf before the cocoa yam? Yes, you can actually first put your bitter leaf before you put your cocoa yam. But that is why the reason why they put bitter leaf before cocoa yam is so that your bitter leaf will soften. My bitter leaf is already soft, so I don't need to put it before the cocoa yam. Do you understand? So right now, this is my bitter leaf soup. Believe me, what are you saying? Wow, it's thick, isn't it? Very, very thick. But can you complete? But can you complete cooking this without adding one powerful ingredient? Very powerful, like very powerful. You cannot cook bitter leaf soup with a very 
without this powerful in, uh, ingredient now i'm going to bring it out because i hid it somewhere in my cupboard because when i brought out when i brought it out this um, when i wanted to cook fry was everywhere they almost chased me out of my kitchen so i hide because it smells but believe me about um this is it i just um you can actually you know grind it while grinding your kind of fish you see you can grind them all together but no i didn't i have to just melt it with a little water and then to the soup i smell like this now once you add this to your soup everybody will know you're cooking in tradition oh jesus you can come smell sure without testing and I'll show you a bad cook hmm I'm not sure I added it sorry but believe me this is delicious oh my god it's too much mm, I'll be turning it so that it can turn if not Italy will just jump back to one side mm -hmm. so this is my bitter leaf actually going straight inside my soup ndi ibokwenu ibokwezon in case you want to marry an evil man or your destiny god have destined you to be married to evil man the thing is that you have to learn how to cook this yes make your husband happy that was hot Yes, that would help. The reason I'm putting it step by step so that I can um, ah, that was hot, so that I can turn it. Now this is my beautiful bitter leaf soup. This is how bitter leaf soup is supposed to um look like. I don't like much leaf. As when the leaf is too much. Now this is my bitter leaf soup. This of a very good friend of mine. When I was small, if I hold your hand like this to put soup on the pot of cooking, that means I want to bring hot soup. My brother can testify to it. But I'm, I'm, I've grown up, I'm not a good girl. So I'm going to, I'm not going to be wicked. So she's going to test. Is there bitterness? Are you feeling bitterness? No. Is it sweet? Thank you very much. I also have another person to test. This big hand you are seeing here has been waiting for the soup. So, first. What's my face now? We don't want to show. So, they said my food is good. Thank you very much. So, this is how to cook a beautiful, beautiful. Ofe Olubu. Ofe. Olubu. Olubu. Conclusions. Now, this is how to cook a beautiful bitter leaf soup. This is my bitter leaf soup. Darcy. So you can see, I am a good African woman. Hi, my mama bought me well. Ada, da. Yo, peckem, peckem, peckem. Ask flavor, it will tell you that better soup na money kill em.